everyone, Dr. K from the Annex and Eisenhorn Chiropractic and Physical Therapy, collectively known as Eisenhorn Health and Wellness. Um, so we wanted to put some, some do's and don'ts out there real quick about working from home. So we know that a lot of you guys may have really nice setups at work, at the office, and maybe you have an ergonomic chair or a sit-to-stand desk, and you probably don't have access to some of that or all of that at home. So you're probably working from things like your dining room table, uh, your kitchen countertop, your bed, your desk, whatever you're working with. So what we did today is we just took a foldable table and kind of made a makeshift dining room table slash desk. So what we're going to start talking about first is chair positioning and kind of just general posture. So I'm going to show you guys on your chair. The biggest thing is if you have a chair with back support, that's what you want to use. Try to avoid things like stools. Try to avoid not having any sort of back support here. That's just going to encourage that slouched forward posture like this. So. This chair, as you can see, nothing fancy. It's really, really simple. It doesn't have any of that fancy back support, arches here, any of that. So what I wanna make sure first is I wanna make sure that my butt is scooted all the way to the back of the chair. So I'm gonna be here. That way my back can be supported on the backrest back here. This is all well and good if your back is supported back here, you're all the way back in the chair, but now if you start going like this, and you're slouching like this, what's the point? So you really wanna be conscious of your posture up top. So like I said in some of the exercise videos, and I said, set your shoulders kind of down in your back pocket. So set those shoulders down in the back pocket. With that, it'll cause that neck to kind of go into that neutral alignment. Pretend like you have a string at the top of your head and someone's pulling that string up. You want that nice, tall posture. Another thing is height of the chair. If you have control on the height of your chair, you wanna make sure it's not too high but not too low. You want your feet flat on the ground like that. Nice flat, nice tall posture, good back support. Now I know we're human. I know after a half hour, after an hour, however much time, it depends on each person. You may start getting this, you may start getting you know, the whole crisscross applesauce and you're sitting up here. Um, what I would say with that is there's nothing wrong with that. That's just an indicator to you that it's time to get up and move. Um, try not to form yourself into a pretzel while you're working. That's just going to lead to further problems. So if you find yourself kind of transitioning into those poses or positions when you're sitting, probably an indicator to, hey, let's get up, let's move, let's go for a walk, things like that. Then come back, reset posture-wise. Okay, so now let's talk about the desk itself. So some of you may have a keyboard, mouse, monitor. Some of you may have just a laptop. Whatever we're working with, um, we'll kind of breeze through it real quick. So let's talk about keyboard first. Keyboard and mouse kind of, they're on that same plane, same level. You don't want your keyboard too high to where you're working up like this. You also don't want it way too low so that your arms are kind of launching down and you're having to slouch down again. So have that keyboard at a nice, comfortable position. If you have any sort of carpal tunnel problems, maybe roll up a towel, put something here so that your wrist can rest on rather than resting on that hard surface for hours upon hours. So have that rolled towel, have it nice rested on here, again, if you have carpal tunnel problems. So with that keyboard, I'm not just focused on my shoulders, how if it's high up here, my shoulders are, are hunching up like this. You also wanna make sure your elbows aren't like this. You don't want your elbows here, you don't want them straight out. Nice, comfortable position at the elbows. Mouse, kind of same thing, it's, it's, it's on that same plan, that same level as the keyboard. Monitor screen is very important. So monitor screen, as you can see right now, this monitor is too low for me. Um, a lot of times people will say, oh, well, my monitor's here or my monitor's up here. I can just look down and I can just gaze at it with my eyes. You probably can for a couple minutes or so, but then after time, you're gonna start, your head's gonna be down like this looking at it, or if your monitor's up, your head's gonna be looking at the monitor like this. That neck is not in that neutral alignment how we set it to begin with. So what we wanna do is if your monitor adjusts and you can raise it up or down, awesome, work with it. Try and get it at that eye level. If you can't, take little things. So we have, if you have kids at home or if you were a student once and were like me and kept your textbooks um, or some of our trainers kept theirs, throw some of the books up underneath your monitor or your laptop or whatever it is and kind of stack it up until this is just one of them this is still a little too low for me but stack it until it's that good eye level 
So that's monitor. Um, last thing that we want to talk about is sit to stand desks. So a lot of you guys probably have them at the office now because they've become this huge popular movement within the last couple years. Um, not all of us are fortunate enough to have them at home though, but you can make simple um, sit to stand desks. Well, not really sit to stand, but you can make stand up desks. So all you need are books again, books or boxes or whatever you have at home, just be creative. So if you have a higher countertop, like a kitchen countertop um, or any sort of bar that you have or any countertop that's, that's a little higher, maybe dressers are higher, I know mine is at home, um, or if you don't and you have a desk, that's fine too. So taking books and just stacking books on top of each other, these books are a little too small, but just you guys get the picture. Stacking the books and you can place that monitor up here again this is still a little bit too low from a monitor standpoint if this is just the monitor um, and again try and if you have boxes and you can make sort of a surface that's great if you don't have access to any of this you don't have any books you don't have boxes you don't have any of that that's fine that just means you just need to get up and move more so my kind of rule of thumb that I always tell people is hey sit for an hour do your work in good form and posture then get up move go for a walk around the neighborhood a walk with the dog go for if it's raining out do a walk in the house do one of those home exercise programs pull up some of the exercises that we've posted um, do some of those and if you don't like exercising i encourage you to get into it but but maybe just do a couple loops around the house get up move around then go back do another hour um, if any of you are already dealing with neck pain back pain because of this we've had a lot of patients come in who it's been this upward rise of, oh, my neck hurts, oh, my, my back hurts, and the only thing that's changed is I'm working from home. So if any of you are in that position and you're dealing with it, come on in. We will help get you back to that pain-free, um, pain-free free phase um, so that you can get back to working. But if you aren't in that state yet, just take a couple preventative measures so that you don't find yourself in that position um, and that, you know, hopefully it, this doesn't last for the foreseeable future, but if it does, you guys are set up to, to work um, with good form and posture.